Hi guys, uh, welcome to Investing with JYK, and today we'll talk about this uh, K Wall International Holdings Limited company, and uh, it's a Hong Kong company owned by this Louis J Wall. Oh, okay, he's a very uh, wealthy guy. And apparently, he's the second richest man in Hong Kong after um, what was that names? They call him Superman, um, Li Kashin. Yeah, after that guy. So, what does this company do? It basically is a real estate company. It uh, builds houses, builds apartment buildings, sells them, and runs um, hotels, and... <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. And rents out apartments. Okay? So it builds stuff in those three places. Hong Kong, Yangtze River Delta, essentially... Um, let's open a map of China. Here, this is. I mean, just look at the density of the roads. You will You can see this is a lot denser than other places like here, for example. Right, lots of roads around here. Hangzhou, Shanghai, Suzhou, and Nanjing is essentially where everything is happening. Uh, in terms of GDP per capita, these are very high places. And the other thing that they said was, uh, where are we? The uh, Pearl River Delta. Here, it's Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and everything. Okay, so just uh, to let you know what run here in Shenzhen, you got Tencent. In uh, Hangzhou, you got Alibaba. In Shanghai, is where all the finance happens, and. For whatever reason, um, they uh, classify Hong Kong as a separate thing. I would say this is also part of the Pearl River Delta, but whatever. Um, okay, so they basically build stuff in a very um, high-priced um, uh, regions in China, where the where the Spending power is very high, where land price is very high, where all the activity is happening. Okay, so um, again, this is similar to the one we discussed previously, the the uh, Jardine Mather Matheson company. This follows the uh, international financial s reporting standard. Which means, other than the normal uh, income, they also have this um, uh, revaluation of uh, investment properties. You know, the the the, the land, um, the uh, houses, and whatnot. So the income is split into underlying profit and um, Profit. So, the more prudent thing I would say is to only account, um, only think about the underlying profit. Those are like the realized gain. Uh, you can see there's a drop, but these are housing companies. So, I mean, and then the stuff they build, if you look at the stuff they build, um, these properties are, are gigantic and it's not a one year you know uh, is there anything actually we could go through the presentation but these um, properties are, are huge so these uh, they won't be completed uh, in essentially a year so uh, you will have fluctuations in earning and uh, let's see Right, so these are the stuff that they have. You know, this looks like a 30-story, maybe more, building. And they're building two of them in one go. 
And uh, so expect that. So remember, we're talking about 25, um, you know, the 25, uh, well, sorry, 2.5 billion Hong Kong dollars. Now, we can, um, basic earnings per sec, uh, per, per share is 128 cents. So that's actually really high considering the price is only five dollars, five Hong Kong dollars. Now, um, if we only consider the underlying profit, we could do a calculation here by doing 3,000, uh, sorry, um, so it's 3 uh, 3.9 billion, right? And then we divide by the number um, of uh, earnings per share, right? The earnings per share, and then multiply it by two. So that is number of shares, basically, in millions in this case. And then we do millions of uh, earnings divided by that. So essentially, you got eighty. Two cents, eighty-two point six cents. Okay, so let's look at the valuation. Five point one six divided by that. So you're looking at six point two um, in terms of uh, EPS, and then the, when the uh, sorry, in terms of PE, where the E is uh, the underlying profit, not the accounting profit, which is um, you know, uh, so this one should really be zero point that. Right, so six point two five instead of what's shown here as four. This is using the the total um, profit. This number. So okay, so that's what we get. And then in terms of uh, dividend, it's eighteen cents. So eighteen cents divided by that. 5.15 is 3.5%, which is a bad. So now we have established this is a company who which has um, uh, some earning that's fluctuating and but it's currently selling at single digits, mid single digits, six times earnings basically, and then uh, dividends 3.5%, not high, clearly, but uh, it, they're expanding. And uh, you can see that the debt has gone up a little bit, but EBITDA over interest has gone up too. So their earning has gone up over um, their interest. So you could look at this and say, oh yeah, they took on more debt. But on the other hand, they're earning more, um, a lot more than their debt. And for a real estate company, this um, leverage is extremely low. And then one characteristics I found about these guys, they have bought some land from far, far ago, like a long time ago, like early 2000s. They even have some land from 1990s. And they're able to hold that land because they have very little leverage. They pay very little interest. So very interesting way of playing uh, real estate. A lot of the companies that I see is they take a lot of debt. They try to turn around the the um, houses, the 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 uh, houses or buildings or apartments very quickly, and to pay back in order to pay back their creditors, and then they pay a very high um, interest rate in order to do that. And uh, so, two different business model, both works. I would say. Uh, I would say this one is slightly less risky because even if they you know couldn't sell their stuff for a while they'll be okay holding their debt because their debt uh, their interest rate will be low because they have very little debt and uh, also they don't have much to pay 
again because they have very little debt. So they should be able to weather some a lot more storms than other people. And uh, I think they will be able to opportunistically deploy more capital compared to others. All right, so uh, yeah, so this is the amount of debt. They have very reasonable uh, debt, I would say. And look at this, 200 million and remember their revenue, their earning was, their underlying earning was two point something billion dollars, right? Look at this, this has got like 300 million. 350 million in 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 the Hong U.S. Well, 200 million in U.S. debt that translates to about 1.4 billion dollars in Hong Kong debt. So 1.5 billion dollars in debt total, essentially. Um, What am I missing here? There are some other debts. Manage lower average interest rate. Guaranteed note and note. Eighteen billion dollars. Let's see what their asset is. Oh, their asset is seventy-two billion uh, Hong Kong dollars. Total debts is eighteen billion Hong Kong dollars. These are very very low numbers. Five billion dollars in terms of Hong Kong dollar in cash, close to six billion dollars. So I mean this is a very conservatively managed company. So that's what I picked out from reading their numbers. And um, you know you can take a look at what they built as we remember we said they built some really large stuff. Uh, this is in Hong Kong, some high rises in Shanghai it doesn't show but it's again high rises in Guangzhou high rises and in Dongguan high rise as well. That's what they build essentially. I mean, this guy is slightly, you know, more probably not much of a high rise, more of a you know, five four story stuff. But mostly high rise is what they build. And in 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 the major city of China, that's all you can afford to build. Um, space is uh, is a premium. Now. Yeah, so again, they just talk about the stuff they build. These are um, the stuff that will be sold in 2018. Some of the stuff that will be sold in 2019. And they have some rental. But look at the rental income. It's only 570 million. Their total income, uh, if we go back to here, their revenue in this case is a shit ton, eleven billion dollars, a billion Hong Kong dollars. So uh, don't get too carried away with their rental income. Yeah, they have some, uh, you know, half a billion dollars of uh, Hong Kong. Uh, so it's like five seventy divided by eleven something. I don't remember exact number. Five percent, not high. Don't get carried away. This is not their. Um, it's not their core business. Their core business, after all, is selling the real estate. Okay, so they talk about some stuff and then how they're going to expand it or not. For this company, I'm not too bogged down by their um, their numbers in the sense that okay. You know, as Buffett says, you can look at some Buffett or or it was either Buffett or Ben Graham that said you can look at someone and see if he's overweight. You don't need need a, a a scale. In this case, what does this company sell? Some houses in some some apartments in China. So it's tied to the Chinese uh, uh, economic uh, economic cycle. It's very low debt. Probably not going to go bust. Uh, has some the, the houses looks. Okay, it's in the wealthy parts of China. Um, the price might go down when real estate crash, but um, they probably can weather that storm. They so that's all we need to know. And the other interesting thing that uh, I I was trying to find was who is the controller and how many shares um, they they own. 
So I found obviously this the the CEO and everything is this Louis J. Wo guy. And um, what it has is 25. So this is 2016, uh, uh, end of 2016. It's 2000, end, of, end of 2017. All right, 2016 annual report, 2017 annual report. He uh, personally has 26 million uh, shares. His spouse has 8 million shares. Um, corporate interest, so he owns some other corporate that which then owns this company is uh, 290 so close to 300 million shares and then there is a family trust between all these all the Louis guys uh, you can see there's one two three four four of those Louis guys and uh, 1.5 billion shares right and uh, so he owns a lot of shares. You know, ignore everybody else because they all share the same pool of family share. This other interest, if you look at here, number three says such interests of in shares in have held by a company, which is the trustee of a discretionary family trust established by the guy. Um, so all these. All four of the Louis people have uh, uh, one point in total have 1.5 uh, uh, billion shares. Say we ignore these guys for now. Just compare this guy, right? Let's look at the 2017 number. And what you know is um, it went from to 25 million. The personal interest went from 26 million to 29 million. So that's three million dollars. His wife doesn't have anything more. Corporate interest went up by two million shares. Uh, the family trust went up by sixty-four million shares. Sixty. Oops. Well, sixty. Sixty. Not sixty-four. Sixty million shares. And his own uh, holding went up by uh, something like seven total is like uh, 70 oops one nine yeah close to 70 million shares in total his uh, economic interest and the holding actually percentage wise went up from 62 1.14 to 62.28 to eight, so slight increase. And if you look at his son, I think the personal interest went up uh, about a million so, and this Paddy person went up by two million almost. Yeah, two million shares. Alexander one six one nine three million shares. So you can see that he himself and his family is buying quite a lot even. Um, millions of shares, right? Uh, the, the family trust, which is shared by all these guys, went up by quite a bit. Uh, was something like 60 million shares in a year. So 60 million shares translate to 300 million um, Hong Kong dollars a lot of money went into the company so they kept on buying so that's why I'm actually very bullish on this company um, the second richest man with his family are all buying the same company so that's what I like and uh, there's one more weird thing about this company they hold a thing called galaxy I mean, uh, actually let's go here galaxy yeah can look at this they have uh, a 
non-current investment of 3.8% in Galaxy Entertainment Group Limited. Okay. Three, remember the number, 3.8%. So let's see what this thing is worth. This stuff is some gambling thing, uh, hotels and shit. Right. So that stuff, in terms of market cap, is $300 billion. Okay, so 3.8%, $300 billion, 3.8% is what? Oh. Billion. Oh, God. It gave me some crazy stuff. Okay, let's convert that into billion. This is now million, thousand, uh, two billion. Ugh. Eleven billion Hong Kong dollars. Three point eight percent of uh, this Galaxy Entertainment is eleven billion. The um, Kwa International Holdings itself is five is fifteen point eight billion dollars in market cap. You see what I'm getting at? You are getting the whole freaking thing. Um, all the land and everything at 4.8 billion Hong Kong um, dollars. It's insanely cheap. So let's try to figure out what we're getting for that 4.8 billion dollars in terms of earning. Right? In terms of asset, it's hard to know because they buy, who knows when they bought whatever crap they bought. So, uh, I haven't looked up that, but let's see. Comprehensive income. I think, okay. So, you can see there is the consolidated profit and loss and comprehensive income, right? Uh, so, for what the difference is, as far as I know, this is again uh, International Finance Financial Report standard. Consolidated is includes all the subsidiaries. Comprehensive includes non-realized uh, market, uh, non-realized mark-to-market profit and losses. So all this stuff is operational and revaluation of um, investment uh, properties. And you look at the difference here, you can see um, the comprehensive income is actually much, much greater, $10 billion, uh, because a lot of that came from change in fair value of known current investment. That is the Galaxy thing. Okay, so obviously the Galaxy Entertainment Group itself is very expensive. It has a 27 PE uh, because it's a, it's a casino company. These are cyclical things and when economies are good, um, they they go up like uh, very much like um, wind resource. When economies are shit, nobody goes to Macau to gamble, right? So if you look at this, you can see yay and yay. Now let's see. Maybe the fair value of this is actually only half of $67. So KWA, in this case, uh, sorry, it was going to be uh, you know half of that. So instead of 289.52 divided by two, multiply three point eight, uh, zero point three eight. Uh, so that is the the value of the shares in um, in Galaxy. If we take half off, 
Okay, so that'll be five billion dollars. The whole thing, the KY, the entire thing was like something like uh, where are we? Like right, fifteen point eight. So you divide, you know, it's ten billion dollars. You're only paying ten billion dollars for the rest of this company, and uh, uh, for that amount, you know, if we take the face value, you're paying. Um, you're paying 4.8 billion. If uh, you say that Galaxy is overvalued and you take half off, you're paying 10.3 billion. Let's stick with the 10.3 billion value, right? So for 10.3 billion dollars, you are getting yourself. Ignore the fair value gain on on investment properties and change of value change of fair value investment properties right just the underlying profit which is uh so I have to go back here got the number the underlying profit 2.5 billion dollars uh 2.5 billion dollars where is my number Sorry, I keep losing my shit. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay. So $10.3 billion, and then your income is 2.517 divided by that. So you're getting a 24% earnings yield. 24% earnings yield. This is insane. Anyways, uh, I like this company. The risk obviously is Chinese property bubble burst. Um, they may lose some money, uh, but I think that's about it. Maybe the other thing is uh, uh, they have some U.S. debt, so they have uh, two hundred million dollars. If the U.S. exchange rate between U.S. and Hong Kong or Chinese yuan. Uh, changes it will affect them and they have floating rate floating interest rate bonds so these interest costs might go up too but the overall risk reward balance I think this is a extremely attractive investment and you got the second most wealthy man adding a lot of money let's just recalculate how much how much money they added. Uh, where are we? Here. How much? How many he added? Just himself, not his. Well, let's add his family as well. It makes it uh, slightly easier to do. Uh, two nine three nine three five six three plus uh, three zero zero six two three one six zero plus one five six four six eight nine eight three six one one three eight two three five plus two six six eight seven six zero five plus one nine three eight one four two eight plus Zero zero five one eight three. We're just counting the family shares once, right? So that's how much, uh, and you can see the approximate amount of issued share capital is very screwed up. Anyway, so that's how many shares they have in two thousand seventeen, and then we're going to subtract the two thousand sixteen shares to calculate how many he and his family bought uh, in two thousand and seventeen. Nine one nine five one seven minus eight. Uh, nine eight eight. Okay, we're not gonna do the eight three one. Seven. Yeah, because this one did not change. Two eight two nine eight five five three nine zero zero minus one five zero oh, four one six one seven one six seven minus one zero zero. Three eight one zero three five minus two four seven two seven six zero five minus one six four eight one four two eight 
Okay, so what is our oh, NNF after minus four zero zero five one eight three? Total number of shares. Whoa! 61 million shares times five dollars each, 300 million dollars. Um, US, uh, Hong Kong dollars. How much he added. In terms of his total wealth, uh, let's see, he's got 21 billion US dollars. So 21 USD to HKD, 165 billion. So he did not add a huge amount. He added uh, about two percent of his wealth. Am I? I think I'm getting it wrong. Not two percent. Zero point two percent of the wealth. But it's still. It's probably going to be a much higher percent of his liquid net worth. But he's adding, so that is a very good sign. Um, it's not a huge portion because I would assume most of it is locked up in here anyways. Let's see how much of his money is tied up in here. One billion, so five, uh, let's see, 1.9, 1.9 billion times 5.16, so 9.8 billion uh, Hong Kong dollars is tied up in here. Divide by around seven, you got 1.4 billion Hong, uh, US dollars. Divide by 21, so 6% of his net worth is tied up in this company. Um, the rest of uh, his net worth, I, I'm supposing, is in the Galaxy thing. We can go back to Wikipedia. So what does he have? He has a um, KWA and Galaxy. Yeah. So basically, those are the two investments he has. And KWA owns 3.8% of Galaxy. And um, he has oh, he has lost a lot of money in 2015. So he's only 11 billion dollars now. He was 21 billion. Holy shit! Uh, 10 billion dollars in a year. I wish I could afford to lose so much. Anyways, um, conclusion. I like this company. This uh, KWA company seems very cheap in terms of earning. Um, seems even cheaper when you take out the public, the assets that it owns that are that is publicly traded. Essentially. You paying $4 billion for a $2 billion earning. Crazy. Crazy. And um, yeah, if you like this, share the video, share my channel, click like. If you don't like, cl click dislike and leave comments. Tell me if I'm missing something here and uh, talk to you next time. Stop recording to use this feature. How the hell does...